I spy a star there. Okay, I think I'm on. We have started with our 21 days of lockdown in South Africa last night at 12 o'clock. And um, I, as we all have, have been bombarded with so many ideas and instructions, wash and rinse and do this and do that, which is fantastic. I'm not against that at all. We do that, all of us, and stay away, etc., etc. But I thought I wanted to pop into your living room and come and have some tea with you where you are and just have some heart-to-heart -heart chat because it's so wonderful in a way to be challenged to really understand what is it that I really believe? What is it that helps me through this time? And having been put to the test and to hold on to truth, it gives me such liberty to share it with you. And I decided to call it our tea time chat because I've invited you to come and have tea with me. Nicola and I were having some tea time this morning and it was such fun. My little granddaughter, we built a little house and we prepared everything and picked some flowers so we could have a beautiful proper tea time. And I was thinking in the lines of that, of a few thoughts around me inviting you for tea. What what are the requirements to have somebody over for tea? First of all, it would be because I would like you to be here. And that's so important to understand that the love of God likes you. He likes you in his company. He loves spending time with you. And um, he finds you desirous and very, very entertaining. And he loves your company. And because I love your company, I want you to know that I've invited you for tea. And I have also had to prepare the place a little bit. You, you prepare, you clean up, and you pick up the toys that's lying around, and you set the table, and you do all those beautiful things, and you go and you go and bake some cake and set the table and get the cake. So what's on the menu for today? First of all, I thought we should bake some, have some, I've baked them, rock cakes and some salted crisps and some sweet honey flapjacks or crepes, whatever you call them. And I'm going to start off with the rock cakes first. Rock. <laughs> rock is the very essence of what God is all about. He has wanted us to associate him with the term rock, I think maybe more than most other things. He's the rock of ages. He's that safe rock that is cleft for us in this shelter. And he talks about it in the parable of the houses that were built, the one on the sand, and the one and this and that and the other, and the other one on the rock, having taken away the sand and found yourself on a solid place. Why I want us to maybe just stop a little bit at the rock is, we, we don't know, none of us know where this all is going to go. We don't know. We all hoping and praying and guessing. And I want you to know that it is possible to find yourself on the rock. In the knowledge that he put us there for starters, 
He secured us. It is not us securing ourselves in God that makes us secure. He said, I have secured you in myself. And I find you so secure that there's nothing more that God can do. There's nothing more in all of eternity that God could ever do to secure you more in himself than what he did. He secured you in himself in creation, in the, in the most amazing development of things. And then he came and he secured us when he took us on this road where he said, I'm going to go to your fears, your own judgments, your, your darkness, your distancing minds. I'm going to go right in there and I'm going to show you actually how secure you've been all along. And nobody can teach you that but the Holy Spirit and your spirit. You can allow the Holy Spirit to say to you, how much loved you are, how secure you are, how one you are, how enveloped you are in God, that the things that we have thought that has distanced us from Him are our own imaginations. They have no substance. There's nothing in them that can legally separate you. So to allow God to say, Father, show me how one I am with you, how happy you are to find me, your incarnation, your expression, your happy home, your happy tea time place. And the Holy Spirit would come in and swish away those things, those little arguments and those things that we've held on to and said, it's been part of me and this is how I thought of myself. And, and the Holy Spirit comes and brushes them aside and we find ourselves face to face with the living God inside. <laughs> like I would, wish I could just pop into your home right now and just look you in the eye and say, wow. This is wonderful to be face to face with you and to find you wanting me in your presence and in the same way for God to allow him to show us how incredibly loved we are. And we allow the things that we've held on to for so long that distanced us, we allow them to go. We allow them to, to be pushed aside and say, I choose at this time to find myself in a new understanding, to find myself in a safe place. The safest place is not where we are physically. The safest place is right here in a mindset that is at home with the indwelling Christ, a mind that has made peace with God's desire to, to be one with us. It's his desire, it's his will, it's his accomplishment, it's his plan. And we come to that place and we say, well, God, if you think so, I will oblige and I will enjoy it and I will love it and I will I will allow you to take me to the place of eternal bliss, eternal peace, eternal tranquility. In your presence is fullness of joy. How is it possible? I don't know, but I know it is. In your presence is peace that passeth all understanding. So if we don't have peace in, in what we behold, then maybe what we behold in isn't the truth. Let's behold the truth. And say, Father, I'm yours. I've invited you for tea. And we're going to sit face to face and we're going to enjoy what you've prepared for us. You said you've prepared a table for us in the presence of our enemies. 
and it's never been people. People and things have never been our enemy. Just as this crazy thing that's happening worldwide now, suddenly we are confronted with a worldwide enemy. That's not a doctrine or a person or a ideology, something beyond that. And our neighbor becomes precious. It becomes part of the family because we're part of the same army that is against this enemy. And these lies and things that wanted to penetrate and settle, we found that our immune system, because that's your most precious protection you have now, you know that, is your own immune system. It's the, the very thing that will fight disease and virus and everything is our immune system. And your immune system in spirit, do you know what that is? It's... It's the very basis of God. It's the very foundation of the being of God. Our immune system is our innocence. It's the most valuable place you can find yourself. Find yourself in innocence. Find yourself redeemed, delivered, declared holy. And dwell there, don't move away. You know, like it's locked down at the moment and they even have the army out. So if, if you wander around or drive around, the police are there to chase you home. And I want to encourage you when thoughts and things come that want to attack your immune system in the spirit, your innocence, chase them. Chase them. Put the police on them. Put the dogs on them. Say no, 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 no. I want you to know the truth, the truth about my innocence, the truth about my oneness with God. And I stay there. I lock myself in. I embrace myself in, into his embrace because he's already embraced me there long ago. When he, when he thought of me, when he dreamt me up, he embraced me in himself. And he said, nothing can separate me. So if God says nothing can separate me, I go with him. I said, Father, nothing can separate me from you. And I want you to overwhelm me with that. I want you to overwhelm me with that reality. How inseparably one we are. With him and with one another. How wonderful is that? How totally wonderful. Remember, we had the rock cakes and we also had some salted, crispy, whatever, whatevers, because the salt, the salt is so beautiful. The salt purifies, the salt disinfects. And I want you to have a purifying, disinfecting effect in your conversation with one another. That which you speak, will it be a disinfectant? Will it be a purifying conversation? So that when the people have left your you as your audience, they would feel clean, they would feel light, they would feel delivered, they would feel full of hope, full of faith. Come on. If ever there's a time that the world needs to hear hope and faith, it's now. Sorry, this thing is going bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> it's wonderful. We're so connected with the kids wherever they are. Stefan and them in Switzerland and our beautiful friends in Germany and all over the world. We're all connected. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this time. Father, I don't know how we can do that. But I thank you for this time. I thank you that truth will triumph and the love of God will triumph. I thank you that we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that love and life comes from you. And this terrible thing is not of God. But I thank you that you have made us wise and able to go through this. And I thank you for solutions that will come that deliverance will come to the world. And thank you for coming for tea. I hope to see you tomorrow. I love you very much and hold on to the beautiful embrace of Jesus. Mwah. If you end this live again now,